Okay, so um, uh, good morning, assalamualaikum. Um, um, so uh, today we are going to um, explore and discuss, hopefully together, uh, the uh, practice uh, of um, uh, hybrid learning. So uh, I, although I put the uh, remote learning, um, hybrid learning, remote learning, um, it's sort of uh, part of a larger jargon uh, or terminology of um, uh, uh, hybrid uh, classrooms, which um, let's define it as um, the, sorry, uh, let's define it as um, a situation where you have students that's, that's, that's learning inside the classroom and also uh, students who are uh, engaging with uh, everybody uh, from uh, wherever they are. That means uh, they are uh, uh, online, um, like what we do during the COVID situation, so the COVID pandemic, where we, we have uh, totally 100% online learning. The, the difference between uh, online learning, total, fully online learning and hybrid learning is that uh, when we look at the literature and then we look at our own practices, we find that it's actually easier to go uh, totally online. It's, easy, it's, it's of course natural to us to go totally face to face. But when we discuss and we talk about hybrid learning, where you have two modalities of students, that means uh, students who are online and students who are in the classroom together, then it becomes something that's uh, a bit more complicated. So that's, that's let's put it at that. So, um, and the, the, the complication comes from uh, trying to be able to give due attention to both groups of students, those, those who are uh, online and those who are uh, in the classroom, uh, 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 a balance, um, uh, a balance of, uh, attention or balance appreciation. And I would say, and I would argue that it would actually be very easy uh, for us to uh, sort of for, forget the students who are online uh, when we have students in the classroom. Because uh, normally, uh, I, I'm, I'm not sure whether you uh, agree with me on this or you have the same experience with me with this. Uh, when you have uh, two sets of students, one who are online, one who are uh, uh, in the classroom face to face, it's easier to actually to pay attention more to the students who are in front of you. And uh, in and coupled with um, the fact that uh, especially in uh, a very basic uh, hybrid learning setup where you only have um, a single monitor to uh, project your screen or to share your PowerPoint, for example, like, like the one that we are doing here, the students who are online is not visible to us. They, unless they make themselves hurt or they, or they say something uh, in, in, the class, in, in the classroom. So in, in the, either in the Zoom session or in the, the team session or in the, the, the Google Meet session. So unless they make themselves hurt, hurt it is a tendency that they might be forgotten because uh, we are focusing on our, our projection screen which normally hides the, the, the view of the, uh, the, the students uh, who are online and the attention given to the students who are uh, in front of us face to face because then they will be talking, they will be engaging with us. We will be always constantly looking at them uh, when we engage the, the students, isn't it? And, and that is actually something that's very real and uh, I would say it's a concern of all uh, lecturers, especially when they have to do uh, uh, hybrid learning. Uh, this semester, I am doing hybrid learning with uh, both my undergraduate students um, in the first half of the semester. And then, uh, of course, throughout the semester with my uh, student, who, with my master student, um, which some of them is, is face-to-face -face with me. Um, so I, I, I teach them on Saturdays, actually. 
and some of them are uh, online and they are in a different country. So uh, the, the master student that I teach on, on Saturdays, we have students from um, Africa and Middle East joining the class. Um, and it's, it is actually a morning class. So time zone uh, and time difference also a, a, a bit of an issue there. I think uh, uh, that is also something that we uh, need to sort of think about. And, and so, uh, so let's put it like this. So if you are in Dubai at four o'clock in the morning, and uh, we are in classroom um, on a Saturday at and probably nine or ten o'clock. So uh, unless you have a really really uh, engaging lecturer, or unless you um, really really have high motivation, then if you are sitting in front in of the computer alone, you are liable to be very very sleepy, isn't it? So so that is um, I think the the struggle that. Uh, we face as um, as educators when trying to conduct uh, hybrid sessions, and and that is just my example. I I I am sure that everybody else would have uh, somewhat of a similar uh, example or experience that you can share. And in fact, I would like to uh, to invite uh, anyone uh, with uh, a story now to uh, please open your. Uh, videos, uh, hopefully, and then um, uh, turn on your mics uh, or unmute your mic and uh, just just tell us, uh, just tell the group what kind of experience of uh, hybrid learning that you are experiencing right now in your classrooms. Anyone? Hello. Assalamualaikum, um, Doctor. Waalaikumsalam. Okay, I... I I got a bit of experience uh, what happened to this semester. Actually, it's still going on, to be honest. Um, I conducted a few classes, like online classes, and also um, uh, hybrid classes um, for my students. And most of my students, they um, uh, can attend um, physically, but still like 30% of them uh, still have to be online. So what happened like um, at first of my lectures for like, for the first 15 minutes, it's okay. Like I, 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 my brain can, can comprehend that I have a both mediums, physical and online. But when it goes by the times, I forgot that I have an online student and focus only to the physical student. Yeah. <laughs> and um, with a certain like, a limitation on the uh, technology and equipment, I couldn't move far from the mic. I mean, uh, uh, and... Um, it restrict my uh, movement as well. Once it restrict my movement, my excitement of the lectures become less and lesser. <laughs> so uh, sometimes, uh, and and, uh, and uh, I, I can see that uh, my online student um, eventually they were like they're like giving up. They're just like um, you know that you are not giving attention to them, and they like uh, it's okay. They just keep quiet in the uh, in the in the, in the classroom. So I do not know uh, what else I could you know do. To you know, make myself um, aware of this kind of um, challenge, um, I would say. Yes, thank you, uh, Doctor uh, Fazal Nizamet. Yes. Uh, from, from which um, uh, department are you? Uh, from a civil engineering department, just next okay. to faculty. All <laughs> oh, right, next to my faculty. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> okay, so um, anyone else who would like to share your your experience? We really, we really like to uh, uh, hear more stories, if you have any. And I think um, uh, while uh, uh, um, you sort of pick up the courage to, to talk, um, I, I can see uh, familiar names here, uh, like, uh, like Mazia, I know Mazia, I know um, uh, Yazid, um, I know Dr. Zurina, uh, Dr. Um, uh, Ng Liluan also, uh, of course, um, uh, I know Hadi from, from, from library. So uh, do you do, you do um, uh, Hadi learning? Uh, I know. Uh, I, can, I, can I give my opinion? Yes. I don't know whether, uh, can I speak? Yes, please. Oh, okay. So uh, the issue with hybrid learning is um, the equipment uh, given to us is not 
enough. So for my experience, I had to bring my own laptop. I had to bring my own headset. I had to bring my own mic. I had to bring my own speaker. I had to bring my own Bluetooth. I had to bring my own um, mouse and also my mouse. Own, yes, because okay. they don't have a mouse that can attach to my my because you know they use the desktop yang ada that it's a special i don't know what you call it it's 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 the round one instead of the usb or the usb c wow that's uh, uh, like a, a 20 year old computer yeah so <laughs> imagine you also have to like go around bringing a small uh, speaker because otherwise you can't really hear what the okay. students in the ms teams are saying so right. it's a uh, uh, macam you kena buka booth sendiri pula so annoying yes Okay, I, I mean, I can, I can sympathize with that, but um, uh, seriously, your, 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 wherever you are, uh, it needs you, you need to actually uh, like invest on some some new technologies. I'm, I'm, I'm really amazed um, uh, that you are still, uh, you are still able to um, conduct uh, high learning with that kind of old computer. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, going back to uh, Ano just now. Um, <clears throat> are we have at the library, we have not attempted hybrid learning so we either previously we have either full uh physical class or nowadays we are only having online classes um but the online classes uh, we are okay with the online classes for the postgraduates uh, because they are from everywhere and they can conveniently attend the the training session quite easily mm -hmm. um but uh, so far yeah uh, we also do not have any specific technology for for hybrid classes mm -hmm. as well i mean our lab is still uh, our old lab lah, so Um, it might be quite difficult for us to to do it as well, even though we have a big space here in mm. in the library in our lab. Mm. Okay. All right, thank you. Um, um, yes, I just one more uh, uh, from uh, API. Data Data Ahmad, do you have anything to share on hybrid learning? Uh, Bismillah, Rahim. Terima kasih, Dr. Zahir. Uh, API uh, berdasarkan Uh, apa perbincangan dengan para pesyarah sebenarnya kita dah buat uh, taklimat ya di awal awal semester untuk menjalankan uh, hybrid uh, ataupun pengajaran secara hybrid ini tapi uh, 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 sebahagian pesyarah nampaknya agak kurang berjaya berdasarkan daripada uh, maklum belas daripada pelajar lah uh, nampaknya ada banyak juga pelajar yang Uh, memaklumkan mereka agak kurang selesa lah mungkin disebabkan oleh persediaan kita agak kurang uh, baik mungkin seperti mana yang disebut di pesara-pesara lain tadi dari segi uh, mungkin uh, prasarana kan uh, kebanyakan pesara terpaksa menggunakan uh, sendiri uh, apa, peralatan sendiri dan uh, satu yang tapi sebenarnya ada juga uh, para pesara yang berjaya melaksanakan uh, apa, pengajaran secara hybrid ini dengan baik dan nampaknya kehadiran ataupun uh, apa uh, banyak pelajar hadir yang kita tukar-tukar uh, tu uh, dia punya shiftnya tu uh, nampaknya agak berjaya juga ya tapi nak sebut bahawa secara umumnya ada yang uh, berjaya dan ada yang tak berjaya dan Uh, 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 nampaknya ada pelajar sebenarnya ya, kalau kita berikan uh, pilihan mereka lebih suka uh, dalam talian sepenuhnya <laughs> ya yeah? uh, itu mungkin banyak sebab lah tapi secara umumnya uh, saya boleh sebut kalau di API uh, ada pesyarah yang berjaya melaksanakan yang mereka katakanlah dengan baik dan ada yang memang tak berjaya melaksanakan pengajaran secara hybrid dengan baik terima kasih yeah. alright thank you I, I, mean, i mean yeah um, uh, uh, we can see that um, they are Uh, challenges of course uh, there are uh, technological requirements that we need to uh, look at uh, properly um, like uh, just now uh, Dr. Mazia was say, saying that she has to bring um, speakers and uh, and mouse and, and stuff and and uh, we we actually found found that um, the uh, the the technical requirements for uh, hybrid learning is actually much uh, more stringent Or much more, uh, I would say, uh, I I will not would use the word complex because uh, complex means it it is hard, very very hard to do. It's it's you need to be a little bit more particular uh, about uh, choosing the technology for 
hybrid learning because you actually are trying to merge two worlds. One uh, of the world is online and one of the world is uh, actually face-to-face. -face. So let's uh, continue with our uh, discussion um, uh, today. So let's uh, move on the slide. So, so this was the first um, uh, hybrid learning uh, webinar or training that we had uh, done in, uh, uh, in, in EDAC. Uh, I think it was uh, September last year when I had to fight the monkey, if you still remember, if, if you uh, were in, in the session. So, um, and, and this is uh, part of the technology that we are trying to introduce into the university, into, the, into our classrooms. And we are actually moving forward with it, um, although I would uh, personally say it's not that uh, is not that quick enough because we, we actually wanted to uh, introduce and make sure that every room that is designated for hybrid learning can be equipped by the end of the year. Uh, although uh, when we go into the, the procurement, then uh, all sorts of um, issues uh, uh, start to uh, crop up. And so that's why uh, it's still uh, developing right now. So, uh, but uh, hopefully, uh, in the new future, when we sort out all the, uh, the, the procurement issues, then we'll be able to have um, a proper setup for our uh, hybrid learning. And this is actually a, a, a picture from um, uh, the Faculty of Science. So one of the lecture rooms in Faculty of Science uh, was uh, converted into a hybrid learning um, setup. So this is actually at the back of, of the room. So you can see what you can see here is actually the, the monitor uh, screen and also uh, a camera. That's actually, if you, if you see properly at the bottom of the monitor, there's an upside down camera. So that is a called a PTZ camera. So the, the camera can actually um, uh, pan left and right and also it can uh, zoom. Um, uh, and it can also tilt. So that means uh, it can move up and down. And that is something that we wanted that we are uh, now uh, in the procurement process uh, trying to, to procure for uh, the designated uh, rooms that will be doing uh, hybrid learning in University of Malaya. Betul lah eh? Yeah? Ada noise lah? Ada macam feedback? What is it? Um, so can, can uh, everybody please um, uh, mute yourself so that then we can uh, avoid the, the noise? I, I'm not sure whether Maybe coming from from your room. Oh, okay. I think that's um, a car alarm that's going off. Oh, uh, it's from alarm. the admin. It's from the admin mic. The BSFBE admin mic just now. I think. Oh, is it? So I think, mm -hmm. I think that's that's a car alarm. It is a car yeah. alarm. Yeah. Yeah. Nothing okay, much um, we can do. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, so. Uh, please, the owner of the car, can if you are in here, can you please uh, turn your uh, your alarm off? <laughs> okay, so um, hopefully uh, it's it's um, a little bit more bearable. Um, let me try and uh, let me try and turn on my uh, uh, crisp if I still have it. Um, okay. Okay, the alarm has stopped. Okay, thank you. So probably someone, uh, someone in here uh, is um, uh, his car alarm, her car alarm uh, just went off. Just now. Okay, so um, hopefully you can uh, hear me well now. Okay, so um, oops, what happened? Okay, so um, when we talk about the uh, the hybrid learning, we need to actually first talk about the, the space where we do uh, the hybrid learning. From uh, from our research uh, and into the literature and also uh, examples from um, uh, quite a number of places, uh, actually the classroom uh, in the University of Malaya especially will need to change in order for the hybrid learning to be done effectively. 
So we are uh, used to the deep layout. So what I mean uh, by the deep layout is that uh, our classes, our classes are long to the back. And so it's narrow uh, in, in the side and it's long to the back. Um, but we found that um, a white light, a white layout is actually more effective. So I will, I will share, share uh, with you the the, uh, the the screen how a white layout uh, will look like. And one thing that I would like to uh, to advocate or to to ask you here is um, get your faculty to arrange rearrange the table and the chairs, and then to reposition the whiteboard and projection screens. That is, I think, um, will will help in teaching not just for hybrid learning but for for learning uh, generally going forward is to adopt a, a white layout. So this is what we are used to, isn't it? Um, you can still see my screen, screen, isn't it? Okay, so this is what uh, you, you are used to. So we, we are in the front and then the, the learners um, sits in rows and it's actually a long layout. So why not we have this instead, okay? And the reason why uh, this works is that uh, we see from uh, space planning um, exercises, uh, university space planning exercises done uh, across the world, especially in, in the UK and the US, we find that it will help with learning um, in a student-centered approach really, really, really well. Okay, so remember, we are still, uh, we are doing student-centered learning uh, since, I would say, uh, since 2008 or 2010, like that. So people have started moving into student-centered learning. We talk about uh, outcomes-based assessment, um, uh, so, uh, outcome-based education, OBE. Um, and when you say student-centered, the students is at the center of learning. So that means uh, learning, the, the, the educators must be uh, present and uh, visible and uh, actually uh, impactful to all of the students. And um, a better way to achieve student-centered learning, especially in the classroom, so uh, let's talk about the classroom, is uh, to get the, all the students to be closer to the uh, lecturers or to the educators as possible, okay? So student-centered learning of the, the, the layout, the, the new layout, uh, or it's not really a new layout, it's just a change of layout that I'm suggesting is that it will allow um, better positioning of the classroom furniture for collaborative learning, which is one of the uh, uh, prime examples of uh, student-centered learning. Um, and also, it will uh, allow you, to, it will um, free up um, walls or the, the, the walls uh, in front of you and also to the side of uh, to the back of you to um, more surfaces. Okay, because uh, when you are uh, like this, your the, the area of the wall behind you is actually quite small, isn't it? But when you change to this, the area behind you. It's actually uh, wider and you actually can do a lot more um, from there. Okay, so, so this is what a uh, white layout will uh, give you. First, um, of course, when, when we talk about um, distancing uh, students in, uh, in, in COVID, then it gives you better spacing between students in rows because, and then you get uh, the, the better safe, uh, safe distance. And then, of course, uh, more room for movement. And this is important, especially in uh, collaborative uh, learning and also uh, student-centered learning because um, the lecturers or the educators needs to be uh, inside the, the, the student layout. So that means uh, he or she needs to actually be able to go to and, and, and facilitate student learning wherever they are. Okay? And... Uh, uh, a white layout will give you a better circulation uh, for this. And then um, another, another thing that's important, especially in a hybrid learning situation, is actually better acoustic setup. So that means uh, because when you do hybrid learning, 
you need to have microphones placed in the um, in the in the room. Okay, and uh, just now, uh, Mazia was talk was talking about uh, having to bring her own uh, microphone um, and also um, and and speakers. Uh, in faculty of built environment, we are uh, fortunate that the faculty um, has sort of in, uh, has started to, I would say, um, a purchase or, or design uh, its hybrid learning uh, set up before the, the central procurement come in. So they have actually uh, purchased the equipment for hybrid learning and they have set, uh, set up the equipment for hybrid learning. Although it's not uh, at the top quality that we wanted, but the setup at the basic is actually working. So that means I don't have to bring my own microphones. The microphone uh, is actually placed in the ceiling. Oh, sorry, no, not in the ceiling. Um, uh, on the ceiling, oh, okay. So uh, yeah, uh, on the ceiling, uh, in uh, several places, in the, uh, the in the in the in, in the learning or in the uh, uh, in the so bilik kuliah. So what, what we call it bilik kuliah, bilik kuliah tujuh. So uh, it's already sort of uh, embedded in, into the ceiling. So that means I didn't have to bring my own microphone. I can talk uh, normally, and. The students who are in the classroom, they can talk and the, the online students can listen. So that means uh, the, uh, it's not that I am alone engaging two students, but the, the setup will allow the students online to at least hear everybody in the classroom. So that means not just me talking. If, for example, their, their friend uh, is answering questions that I ask, they will be able to hear. So uh, compare that with a setup where uh, the students only hear the, the microphone from the lecturers. If the lecturer asks students uh, in the classroom, uh, the, the lecturer will need to actually give his or her, or her microphone to the students who is answering the question, which is not really the, the ideal, isn't it? So, uh, the, the the acoustic setup, uh, if you can actually place uh, microphones into the, the room, uh, will be uh, the one that we are aiming for. And this is what we are actually uh, designing, and also we are design we are uh, giving to the faculties with our central hybrid learning um, equipment setup that we are working on. Okay, and then. Uh, Another thing that you will have with the white layout is actually a less distance with the back of room, which is uh, important um, <clears throat> because um, of the presence of the online learners that we need to actually uh, be able to give in um, a hybrid learning setup. Because unless you can see the students who are online, you tend to forget them. So uh, in a two so uh, what we wanted to have is actually uh, at the back of the, uh, the room, there will be a computer monitor and also there will be, um, so there will be a not computer monitor, it could be a TV actually, that you, you convert that, uh, it will give you uh, a view of all the online students. So if you have a less distance at the back of the room for that, for, for that purpose, then you will be able to actually see uh, the students uh, who are online at the back of the classroom. And then, of course, you will have more usable surface in front. So that means to the side of you in the white layout, then you have you can, uh, instead of just one uh, projector screen, you can have one projector screen and then uh, probably to the side, of, uh, to, to the other side is the, the place that you can actually write. So whiteboard, for, for example. And uh, we see this, this layout uh, has been used in universities um, as I said, in, in the US, in the UK, and, and other countries uh, for many years now. Um, and the, the, the basis of this is actually uh, uh, based on, on, on extensive research, especially in, in collaborative learning um, uh, movements and also spaces. Okay, so I'll show you some examples that I've um, been able to see uh, when, when myself, uh, so in, in NTU Singapore, I actually went uh, to um, uh, the Hive building. So uh, if you can actually Google 
uh, NTU uh, Singapore uh, Hive, then you will be able to see uh, uh, the 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 like the like the basket um, building, isn't it? And inside is actually uh, this setup where uh, so what NTU did was they designed their classroom, all their classroom in the Hive for collaborative learning. That means um, students all sit in group. And, and all their services are actually writable services. So there is no front of room in this, in this, uh, uh, in this setup uh, or in this room. Everywhere is, uh, everywhere is everywhere. So that means um, uh, the, 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 the educators can just go into any, any of the services and start, start teaching. So it doesn't have to be uh, at the... Um, the front because you don't have really a front. You, you only have a door and then you have uh, sets of tables and, and chairs. And uh, one thing that um, important um, uh, to make uh, collaborative learning uh, or student-centered learning work is that if you can see um, there is a no uh, lecturer uh, table, okay? You have the, the, the table for the console, but there is no lecturer table. Because uh, when you have lecturer table, so that means the, the table where the lecturer sits, uh, what you tend to find is that the lecturers will um, quote unquote hide behind the table and not move around the students. So, and I think that will, is a, a really, really um, a important uh, factor uh, to make a collaborative learning work. That means, to make do with the table, so remove the tab the lecturer table, and uh, let the lecturers actually roam around the class, so that then they can facilitate. Okay, so remember, uh, we are trying to move in, even in hybrid learning. We are trying to move from uh, the stage on the stage. So that means um, normally in the long layout, the lecturer sits behind uh, a desk, and then at the back is the the, the whiteboard or the, the projector screen to um, uh, uh, stage on the stage and then the next one is um, the guide to the site so that means uh, we are guiding the students on uh, at their site so we are facilitating uh, the, the learning so 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 the layout is actually one of the more important things that we need to actually think about when we move into uh, collaborative learning and also hybrid learning. So, so this is an example of uh, the one that I have not been able to uh, go to. Uh, so this is uh, Loughborough University um, uh, in the UK. Again, they have adopted a, a wide layout. Uh, and, but the interesting thing with this is actually, this is uh, a lecture hall. Okay? And normally when we talk about lecture hall, we see rows of of chairs isn't it? With, with long tables and everybody sits side by side but um, in this example what we can see is actually the, the lecture hall is actually also a collaborative learning setup so that means uh, you sit in groups and you can actually discuss uh, in groups even uh, even though that you are in the um, lecturer uh, in, in the lecture hall so so this is something that we wanted to do for the uh, faculty of science uh, uh, lecture hall that um, that i showed uh, earlier in the, in the beginning so we are actually designing uh, this kind of setup uh, in uh, that room and hopefully uh, sometime in the future we'll be able to see that uh, example so this is um uh, in north Central university again you can see that the uh, all the tables, so maybe it's not, it's not that really clear here. Um, the tables and chairs in this room is actually uh, movable, so that means there is no fixed setup. It, so it allows for uh, the, the, the change of layout to be done uh, really relatively easily in the classroom. And this is one of the main features of a uh, collaborative uh, classroom. So, so that is the, the learning space. So uh, the takeaway message is that to do a proper hybrid learning, we need to shift 
our space. We need to uh, turn our um, uh, classroom around a little bit. So it does, it, it, I would say it's not a drastic, drastic layout change, okay? uh, but it will give you a much, much more, um, I would say, uh, efficiency in uh, doing habit learning. Okay. So when we talk about habit learning, so this come, we come to the second one, which is uh, technology, okay? the audio. I would argue that uh, the audio technology is the most important one in habit learning. Because even if, if the students um, can see you, but they can't hear you, then uh, it, it, is, it does not make any point, doesn't it? There's no point of having a, a hybrid learning classroom where the students cannot hear you. The first thing, uh, of course, is to hear the, the lecturers. So that means um, uh, if, for, for example, the lecturer will uh, need to uh, have a mic, uh, so bring uh, like a, uh, like a head, headset mic, then um, of course, but it will not be ideal. Um, but audio is really important because it will allow the students online, especially to hear the lecturers and the lecturers to hear the students online, both. So that means you, uh, the, uh, the microphone needs to be uh, place where uh, so wherever the lecturer goes, the students will can hear can hear the lecturers or the educators clearly, and then of course uh, there should be a speaker system, which allows the educator to hear students online. Okay, because uh, engagement needs to be there. Uh, it is no use uh, if you do. Um, if you do uh, hybrid learning, but you can't hear uh, anybody, is it? So, um, so that's why uh, you should uh, invest. Or we, what we are what we are doing uh, for the university is we are investing on uh, a ceiling mic. So that means uh, the mic that will hang from the ceiling, uh, and the lecturers uh, will not have to wear uh, microphones. So the students online will be able to hear the 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 educators, and then the educators will also be able to hear uh, the students. And uh, the reason why we need to uh, invest, and, spe and especially in the audio technology, is because um, we need to uh, be able to hear the in-class exchanges, uh, so that then people will be will find that they are included in the discussions. Isn't it? And inclusivity is very important, uh, especially in uh, the classroom because uh, that's how you design uh, learning normally with inclusivity so you include everybody you include people who are face to face and you are including people who are online although you might not be able to sometimes see the students but it's very important that you uh, are able to actually hear the students so uh, let's take an example of uh, this uh, this uh, this this uh, this training that we have, or this webinar that we have, isn't it? I can still, I can hear you uh, because uh, when I ask you to speak up, then you'll be able to speak up, and I can actually have that that conversation with you uninterrupted, uh, and uh, I can allow you to actually uh, share your experience, uh, uh, share your uh, opinions with regards to learning space and everybody can hear so and this is um sort of a, a fully face to uh, sorry, sorry, a fully online session which uh, is actually not that uh, hard to do okay so uh, audio technology so number so so, num so number two is actually the audio technology is really really important in your um, classroom uh, actually hybrid classroom and then the uh, the video technology so um it will be um, uh, sort of, uh, so this is uh, normally the, the, the video technology will be uh, critical to the educators. So, so I mean, critical to us as uh, uh, educators because um, we at least will be able to see that uh, we are speaking to someone, isn't it? Uh, so uh, uh, I actually have a, a two monitor set up in, in my room right now. So although I am showing, so that means I am showing my, my uh, projection uh, in one screen and then I am still able to see uh, all of you 
at least your 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 pictures or your avatar on uh, my other screen. So that means I can I can I can see that uh, um, uh, the the people's name at least, and, and that that presence uh, allows me to not feel alone because sometimes when you have just one monitor, uh, when and then when you are projecting your your your, your screen or your, your your PowerPoint projection, for example, then you don't see anybody else. So I I can't see that um uh, Prof Yamuna uh, just just came in and then somebody just just uh, just uh, like like um signed out just now. So I I don't I can't see that and that makes you feel like you are talking to the wall, it? because you don't see the other people on the other side, and that is um why I would um, uh, suggest that uh, in a hybrid learning setup then you need to invest in uh, a secondary monitor and you can put the secondary, the secondary monitor at the back of the room. And um, so uh, that will allow you to be able to see who is your audience. Then you can actually start to uh, engage uh, with them. But that's uh, one side of the uh, equation. Another good side of um, um, uh, of the the uh, the video is that when you have the video, especially of the students online, in front of the classroom uh, or somewhere visible to the students who are in the in the face to face classroom, then they will be able to the, the students who are face to face will be able to see that they are they have friends who are uh, online, and uh, when they engage with the students they will do so with the thought that I actually have somebody who, are, who is listening to me. And that's important because then, um, especially uh, people who are, who, who, who are uh, soft-spoken, so that means they, they normally uh, speak uh, really, really softly, isn't it? When they know that there are people who are uh, like, uh, trying to hear what they are trying to say, then they would start to uh, try to pick up their voices because uh, they know uh, somebody wants to uh, also uh, listen to them. And, and then and having uh, like a screen that shows you have somebody online is actually um, something that will help from that. So then we, um, then we go into uh, the, the uh, little bit of uh, like a deeper in the technology. So uh, PTZ camera, okay? So uh, PTZ is actually PTZ is short for uh, point, tilt, and zoom. Okay, so point that means you can point it uh, everywhere. You can tilt, so you can uh, the um, you can move uh, up and down. Okay, and then zoom. That can you can uh, you have a uh, zoom, is it? Uh, zoom functionality. So uh, when we test uh, PTZ PTZ camera, uh, we find that um, PTZ camera is actually uh, very useful. Uh, that means you can actually have um, uh, like a remote control, uh, not remote control, you can actually have, uh, uh, yeah, normally a remote control that will uh, direct the, the cameras um, where they need to be. We also have a, a more, slightly more advanced uh, category of technology for PTZ, which is uh, auto tracking PTZ. Okay, so an auto tracking PTZ, what it does is, um, it will um, pick up the, the, the educator or the lecturer and then it will actually follow the lecturer uh, where the lecturer goes, okay? Although it sounds like really, really fanciful and, uh, uh, and it's really cool to, to see, okay? So that means um, if the lecturer moves, then the, the camera will actually move. Uh, we find that uh, if you have somebody who is like me who likes to walk a lot in uh, walk a lot in in the classroom, then um, you have a secondary um, uh, effect of uh, motion sickness. Okay, uh, so that means that the students are online uh, with a lecturer like me who likes to walk along along uh, around, around the room, they would get motion sickness. Uh, or mabuk direct. Uh, so, so, and 
uh, when you if you want to invest on a PTZ uh, auto tracking PTZ, then uh, the lecturers need to be trained that they are uh, they they have the potential to induce motion sickness to the to the students online. So they need to be able to limit their movement. Uh, so that then the move the the cam the auto tracking cameras does not move a lot. I think that that's uh, important. If you want to avoid having that that that, that issue of uh, motion sickness, then uh, I would suggest that uh, you use a PTZ with a remote control. So because uh, a PTZ with a remote control, what it does is you will have uh, several preset buttons. That, that so that means. When you push but uh, preset one, then it will point the camera to uh, the, the 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 front of the room, for example. And when you push uh, PTZ button two, it will show uh, the whole of the class, for example. And then uh, you uh, point uh, you you click on PTZ uh, button uh, number three, then you you will point to the whiteboard, for example. So uh, that is uh, better in terms of uh, not. Uh, introducing uh, motion sickness into the into the screen of the uh, students online and and uh, it's actually quite disconcerting uh, when, when i look at the, uh, the the footage from uh, from pdz cameras who move that moves a lot uh, when the lecturers move then i i easily get uh, motion sickness so uh, of course pdz is uh, really useful uh, especially in the, uh, for for hybrid learning but uh, be careful with the uh, auto tracking PTZ. Either you turn it off or you train your lecturers to limit their movement. And so that means, uh, for example, uh, when the, the lecturer uh, so, uh, is teaching in front of the classroom. So don't um, uh, make sure that they, they stay in, in that position for a long time before they uh, move to another position. And then they, they need to stay in, in the new position in, in a long time um, to, to, to sort of um, don't, don't risk to uh, have that uh, motion sickness in the classroom. Okay. And uh, the PTZ just now, when, when I told you uh, for uh, the, the, the auto select button, is it the, uh, the uh, oh, what was the, the, the term that I used just now? Uh, the preset button so uh, it should be able to show uh, the important uh, places in the classroom so that means um, the video will show one the, the students who are uh, in the classroom so that then your online students will actually know uh, these are the students in the classroom um, and also uh, when they speak they know so who is speaking Okay. Uh, and so it's a combination between the video and the, also the audio. And then, of course, uh, the PTZ camera should point to any writable surface in, in the classroom. So that means a whiteboard or... Um, uh, I, 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 I think I remember seeing uh, um, blackboards still used in, in, in UM, uh, somewhere in, in, um, in the one of the faculties. Yeah. Uh, the main projection screen um, it's not it's not really that critical because sometimes when when you have um, uh, an online session, of course, the main projection screen can be actually projected to uh, the students. Um, so it, it replaces the uh, the views, in, for example, in Zoom and in Teams. So you can actually share your screen uh, with the students. So, uh, but uh, if you have any other input sources, so that means if you have a document viewer, uh, then of course it will need to be able to. Uh, chosen. That need to be. It will need to be able to be uh, chosen by the uh, student. And let's say, for example, you have an exam. Uh, a few few surfaces that you wanted to share. What you can do uh, is you can actually elect uh, a student uh, to share that uh, that that screen. For example, you you have your main projection screen, and then uh, the secondary. Um, uh, thing that you wanted to show uh, is the um, the document, for example, that 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 uh, accompanies the the presentation. Then you can actually get uh, one of the students to uh, share that as their uh, screen uh, in uh, in your session. So I mean, in your Zoom session or in your team session, and 
the students online will be able to actually choose between uh, those different um, different views uh, or uh, di different feed that they wanted to see. So then, then um, it becomes something that's, um, uh, uh, I would say, uh, a combination between the, uh, the, the projection and also a uh, and also the uh, uh, whatever secondary materials in, in the classroom that you have because in a face face to face uh, classroom or face to face uh, interaction the students on in the classroom will be able to see everything isn't it they will um, if you uh, like point a bring up uh, like a document or uh, bring up bring up a book for example they will be able to see the book but the students who are online uh, will need to actually choose what they need to see from the screen. So you need to be able to make everything that you wanted to show to the students available to the online students in the screen because then they, they don't have the luxury of um, like switching their, their views uh, just by turning their heads. Okay, so um, this is an, an one example that I can see. Um, um, I would say sort of our, um, our inspiration when we do uh, the planning for our hybrid classrooms in UM. So this is uh, in Belgium, uh, KU uh, Leuven. And uh, this room, the, the, the smart learning room, is actually a, a, an outcome of a research that was done uh, by uh, lecturers here. Um, and you can see uh, from the, the screen, there are a few um, notable uh, examples. But I want you to now uh, to try and pick up and tell me what do you see and how it works for hybrid uh, classroom. So I wanted to stop talking and then I want to let you to try and figure out what do you see and how does uh, this setup works for a hybrid classroom. So anyone? What do you see? Just point it out. So I want to include the, the online learners now. So how we live, what do you see? Are you with us, how we? Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay. Yes. What do you see? In, in this this this, this Belgi Belgium classroom, you mean uh yeah that. this kind of layout? What's that? You mean this kind of layout? See? Yeah yeah the layout. What do you see in here? The the, the specific things that you see that will uh, help you with hybrid learning. Yeah, you can see everyone. So you can, you know, one of the challenge of my class is that I don't see my students on the computer. Okay. When I teach, I see the, the students in front of me, you know, the physic, in, on the, in the physical class. Okay. But here you can see everyone in one, glass, in one glance, right? Okay. Yeah, but uh, I think the students are sitting very close. I made me very um, comfortable. Yeah, um, yeah. Um, in Belgium, they don't have um, like um, uh, distancing rules, I guess. Okay, thank you, uh, Harvey. Uh, okay, so... Um, Someone else, um, uh, has Dr. Hazril? Hi, Doctor. Yes, uh, allow me to give uh, some point. <laughs> yes, please. Uh, uh, I, I can see that the... Actually, I, I could agree with this kind of arrangement with the distance between the students. Mm -hmm. It shows more engagement between themselves and also to the speakers as well. Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, I, I can see the, the, the distance within them is more closer to each other. Okay. So what about the, the, the kind of uh, equipment or technologies that, that's available in the room? How um, does, uh, what, what do you see and how will it work for habit learning? Uh, I could see that uh, most of the students or attendants are using a laptop, um, each of them. Um, I think they have a direct um, uh, communication between the speakers as on the student uh, by using the, the, the laptop. Uh, you know, uh, in case of the speakers wanted to share something, they can access directly from the internet or, or the laptop. Yeah. Yes, of course. Thank you. 
Um, Dr. Wahid Atrush. What, what Hi, good morning. Hi, good morning. Uh, I think yeah, the the layout uh, it's quite okay, but I don't I don't think that this is possible for the social distancing that we have yes. in this okay. COVID situation. Okay. Yeah, and then uh, the good is that they provide the uh, uh, sound bar or speaker bar. I mean, just to uh, uh, give or to provide like a discussion from from the online uh, students. Yes. Uh, I think this will be uh, will be good enough. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Um, what else, anyone? Um, can you pick up some things? I think uh, there is another another point, <laughs> doctor. Yes. Sorry. Yes. Yeah, uh, I think I prefer for the students, for those face-to-face -face students to face each other mm -hmm. rather than giving their backs to the, the other students. Yeah. Yeah, that's all. Thank you. All right. Uh, that is, hey, can I say something? Yes, please. Um, I'm not sure if I'm seeing it correctly, but on top of each of the monitor, there's a small camera, is it? Yes, exactly. That's good uh, observation. So, oh, um, it, what is it for? Is it for when you're talking to the students directly? Okay, okay. so, uh, so as, as I said before, this is actually part of the uh, research that was done um, uh, in, in uh, the KU Givet. So, uh, what they... Uh, what they put in front of, sorry, the, on top of the monitors are actually small web cameras. So, and you can see there are four web cameras in front of each monitor. Okay, and what it does is actually it gives um, uh, an eye-to-eye -eye contact between the, the educators who are in front with all of the students who are online. So, what I mean by that, okay, so let's say, for example, um, the 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 student on the right hand side the the the, the girl on the right hand side with the, with the green shirt when she is speaking to the lecturers the lecturer will actually be looking directly to the micro uh, microphone uh, to the uh, to the camera in front of her face and it gives the uh, impression or give the uh, direct eye contact even though the student uh, is online with the lecturer okay so and you compare that with uh, the students who are in the top uh, sorry in, in the, in the uh, lower left hand corner uh, of the the edge the, the other side of the screen or the, the the left side of the screen so if the lecturer is talking to that person then uh, he or she will be actually be, be pointing his face towards that that camera, so that means um, again psychologically when you're talking when you're talking to someone you want to see their eyes isn't it? because that that makes the the, the, the contact and that that becomes um, uh, psychologically is, is really powerful when you talk and then you uh, you see the eye of the person who you who are talking to and that is what uh, the effect that they wanted to achieve from that setup. So that means um, everybody gets the same amount of attention uh, with the lecturer uh, whether they are face-to-face -face or they are online because uh, in a face-to-face -face situation uh, it is very natural isn't it when somebody speaks to you we uh, we turn to their we turn to their face and then we talk back to them isn't it? so we don't like um, we don't talk to the side we, we talk to the face-to-face uh, -face, isn't it and they wanted to have that the same uh, kind of engagement even though the students are online which I think is, is uh, something that's really great and something sometimes uh, we sort of tend to um, uh, tend to uh, sort of forget when uh, we are trying to design an online learning space or a hybrid learning space. Do you agree Dr. Jasmine? Yeah, I agree. But do we have this kind of setup in US? No, no, unfortunately not. <laughs> unfortunately, we, because this is really, I mean, uh, they, they, they marry not just the, um, um, the, the, the technology, but also the software. So the software that accompanies this is really, uh, really, really powerful. And it's really, really expensive. I actually tried to find the, that software and I found it. And it's, it's really, really uh, expensive to have that kind of um, uh, the setup. So we uh, have to make do with 
uh, our single camera. But again, uh, what we can do, although it's, it's a single camera, uh, when uh, we have the when we uh, sort of uh, position our monitor, uh, it needs to be in relation to the camera. So that means uh, the 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 monitor that that shows the students who are online will need to be either above um, the 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 monitor, the camera needs to be um, either above the monitor or just below the monitor. So that that we are still engaging the students with we. We engage the online students when and we face the camera, and then the students will see that we are actually facing them and, and talking to them. So, so yeah, uh, we can do it uh, at a. I was it's not really limited basis, but uh, uh, sort of a, a really uh, a little bit more scaled down version of, of that. And uh, just now, uh, Dr. White uh, pointed out uh, the the, the soundbar, isn't it? And. And it goes into the, uh, the, the notion just now uh, that I uh, said to you about how important audio is. So um, everybody needs to be able to hear um, uh, not just the, the lecture, but also the, the, the online students. And um, I believe that uh, if different soundbar will show or will, will project different um, groups of people. So that means if uh, uh, somebody from the group, from the, the middle monitor is talking, then the middle soundbar will actually um, uh, be louder or uh, be, be yeah, uh, uh, give out that, that sound from the students who are in the different group. So that is the uh, sort of a classroom uh, setup. What else do you see? Uh, if you uh, if you if you anybody wants to sort of um, uh, jump into the discussion. Hello. Um, Hello. I'm just wondering, can you see the uh, screen that there is a green dot and yellow dot? I, I don't know what this is. Oh, okay. That's actually a part of the part, part of the software. This is uh, actually a student's response. So that means uh, if, uh, for example, so if you have a, a question that, they, that you ask, the student, the students answer by uh, sort of selecting, isn't it? And if you, for, if for example, you select uh, A, then uh, it will show um, uh, A there. Or if the students answer wrongly, so if, if you have like a short quiz in, in the classroom, and then um, so probably the, the 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 girl at the the lock, the the right hand side, the top right hand side, probably got the the answer wrong because the the dot is actually red and then uh, some of the students have a green dot so that means maybe that person answered rightly so uh, maybe yeah so it looks like that uh, okay, and this, thank is you. Actually, uh, this is actually part of the, the, the software the software uh, um, I uh, found uh, so this is actually uh, a software called Barco and actually I, I contacted them and look at their their, their prices and it is actually quite expensive because they have that, that kind of uh, like really, really high-end functionality. Okay, um, uh, let's move on to, so this is actually uh, the other side of the class. So uh, just now this is the, the, the student, uh, all the students. This is actually the lectures with the students and uh, you can see that uh, this, the, the lecture still have a view of their own projection screen, isn't it? So if you look at the, the bottom uh, of the screen, uh, the lecturer uh, has a view of uh, the, the screen that they share with the students. Uh, and also uh, have a view of the uh, students who are uh, online. Okay, so this is an example of, um, uh, si similarly in uh, KU Urban, uh, but this is in uh, lecture halls. Okay, so uh, maybe uh, one day our lecture halls, uh, we can have uh, this kind of setup. Although uh, you can see that the 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 old layout of the lecture uh, the lecture hall is still there. So that means uh, you can see the, the 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 rows of tables, isn't it? But to enable hybrid learning, what they did is they sort of um, close out the the front uh, side of the lecture hall, and then they replace it with uh, multiple um, monitors. So that then the lecturers 
see that they have students online. And I think that's, that's really, really important, especially uh, for us when we are teaching, isn't it? If we don't see our students, then uh, we tend to forget uh, them because we, all, we only have the attention of the students in front of us who are face-to-face. -face. So in a hybrid situation, we need to be able to see uh, both modalities. Uh, students are online and students who are um, who are in uh, in the classroom, and that um, and that will allow us to sort of um, start throwing questions for students who are uh, online because we know and we we see that they are uh, we are there in the classroom because if we um, sort of uh, lose that that view that students who are there are students who are learning um, but remotely from us then we start to uh, start to forget them and then we only engage with the students who are face-to-face -face, which is actually easier for us to do isn't it uh, it's easier for us to engage with the students who are face-to-face uh, -face because we can see them uh, right away but students who are online we don't see them um, and they tend to be tend to be a sideline so this is um, uh, a little bit uh, sort of, I would say, uh, a little bit more similar to us. So this is in Purdue, US. It's more of the, uh, the, 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 the basic layout. But what I wanted to share here is uh, uh, this is actually uh, using uh, a system that is similar to us, the one that we have, which is they are using uh, Microsoft Teams. So if you see the back of, of the lecture just now, uh, this, uh, we can see that that is... Uh, 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 Microsoft Teams that they are using. And of course, this is uh, a hybrid learning because then you have um, the students who are uh, in, in front of the lecture and then uh, the students who are uh, online is uh, projected at uh, the back of uh, the lecture. So that's how they do it. And actually, I would suggest that we uh, have um, something that's better than, than what they are doing uh, in Purdue. The, with the layout that I suggested. So that means our layout should have uh, uh, monitors at the back uh, for the lecturer to be able to see the students who are online. They will need to also have um, a, a second monitor at the back to see their projection if they, they wish to, or they can populate the whole uh, monitor with uh, the students at the back. And then a pro the projection screen will be shown to the students who are in front or in the classroom. So that's behind the, the lectures. Okay, so, so this is um, uh, what we sort of wanted to uh, have in our uh, classes, isn't it? We wanted to, um, so we wanted to uh, change the layout of the, the room from tall or long to wide, so that then we can um, have a more collaborative experience with the students, uh, involve the students in our uh, student-centered learning uh, with us lecturers or uh, educators as the facilitator for learning, not just giving a one-sided lecture that the students, that, that we don't know whether the students learn or not. Okay, So th there is this uh, one um, uh, one quote uh, from, from an author, uh, from an educator, saying that when we do lectures, we, uh, we are actually showing the students that we are working, isn't it? So uh, we, we talk and then we show the students that we are working. But do we know that, uh, do we know that they are, how, how do we know that they are learning? Because when we do one-sided lecture, when we do just the lecture, then uh, what is the measure that they uh, have learned? Is it just because they are quiet, not, not asking that they, they are learning? Isn't it? So uh, the interaction between the, the students uh, in the classroom with us, the lecturers or the educators, is actually really, really important in a student-centered uh, learning. And in a, in a hybrid uh, learning uh, setup, it is also important for us to be able to include uh, all the students we need to make sure that uh, students online and students uh, who are face-to-face -face get the same um, uh, learning experience, okay? Although they are 
their their mood is different, but the learning experience should be similar. Um, for students who are online, and also students who are in the face to face, um, I would argue that it's easy for us to um, pay attention to the students who are face to face, and. Uh, if we get the setup of our classes wrong, then we uh, sideline the students who are uh, offline, and then we will have a, a disparate, a, des uh, uh, yeah, a, a different uh, learning experience for both uh, students who are online and students who are um, uh, face to face. So then we will not be able to give them the the same. Um, uh, they will not be able to get the same learning uh, outcomes if the we 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 did not give them the, the, the right experience or we not design the right experience for students who are in the uh, especially in, in the, the the online part of our uh, hybrid learning classroom. So um, uh, coming back to uh, the uh, the discussion just now, what's important is uh, we need to uh, rethink our classroom layout so that then we facilitate uh, the online learning, the hybrid learning uh, better with the new layout that I suggested. And I'm not suggesting this based on just my, my sort of whim and fancy. This is actually based on uh, a lot of uh, literature and research that was done and examples uh, from other universities have, who have actually uh, switched their layout to cater for the new learning, um, the learning, the, the new learning methods, the new, the new learning, uh, up, uh, the, the new students at the learning um, approach that they are doing. Okay, so that's number one is the layout. Number two, uh, remember that the audio is uh, really really important. I would say I I would actually if I would um. Uh, even argue that audio is more important than video if you have to choose. So I mean, if you, you have to choose, then choose audio instead of video. Because audio uh, or the, the, the ability to hear the students, the ability to hear the lecturers, the ability to, to, hear, the ability to hear each other, students between online and, and the face to face, is really, really important. Uh, in the uh, experience of learning because um, especially when we uh, have conversations with the students uh, in our collaborative classroom, everybody needs to be included in the discussion, even students who are uh, online. And the audio, the, the microphone that we choose, the speakers that we choose for the, the room, uh, for hybrid learning is really, really important apart from the acoustics. And when you talk about acoustics, um, you also talk about the, the kind of um, uh, acoustic paneling that you need to have in the classroom. So, and, and that is um, something that's the um, uh, architectural design side of things. Uh, to, to design um, uh, a room with good acoustic properties so that the sounds don't, don't bounce off the wall too much. And that is something that uh, you can actually talk to uh, your architects and to or to your interior, interior designers to make sure that it's actually um, proper uh, and also good for uh, the students who are in their classroom. Okay, and then uh, the next one is the um, the video. Uh, of course, video is something that's um, I would say uh, psychological in learning. Um, especially when you, you are trying to address people, isn't it? you need to actually uh, speak uh, to them in uh, front of them. And um, I even, so um, you, if you can't see my, uh, <coughs> you can't see my monitor, uh, my camera, I, I actually have a, a, a small uh, sticker that I, that I put uh, on, in front of the my if in front of my camera saying look here when talking because sometimes I when I talk I look at the monitor instead of the camera so uh, I have this uh, this this sticky note that I paste next to my uh, camera saying that look here when talking because sometimes I, I do forget that I, and and then um and so and what I I'm trying to do so that I can have the the direct face to face contact 
uh, that are direct eye contact to the camera and then it will come through in your screen as I'm actually looking at you. So that is uh, something that uh, we need to uh, also remember when we are uh, designing uh, and so having our uh, hybrid uh, classroom sessions. So sometimes you need to actually look directly into the camera so that then the students know that you are uh, looking at them. So that's something which is uh, psychological, isn't it? And then the, the, the third, uh, sorry, uh, one, two, three, four. So the fourth one would be uh, the, the technology that supports your um, online classrooms. So uh, when we talk about the, 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 the video, so the, 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 the Zooms and the, the Google Meets and the, and the Microsoft Teams that we use, we need to be able to equip ourselves uh, in um, the ability to do uh, a lot of, uh, not a lot of things, uh, just simple things, things like uh, sharing screen, uh, things like uh, annotating. So that means uh, I can actually uh, pick up um, uh, a pen here uh, and, okay, and I can actually uh, write. So this is just a, a ability in uh, Zoom. So you can actually like um, yeah, uh, draw circles here. Okay, so so in Zoom, of course, uh, it would, it does that. Or you can actually use uh, some kind of um, like uh, stamps. So so no, uh, so this uh, so this is just a uh, right stamps. And then um, so in Zoom, you have a few things that you can do. In Teams, also you can uh, also have a few things that you can uh, do. Uh, and it's actually good for us to actually uh, learn how uh, to do that because it will actually add to the experience of the students who are online. And it is, it is not uh, that complex actually to learn how to sort of control a few things in your uh, Google Meet, in your, in your Zooms, or in your, in your uh, Microsoft Teams. Um, okay, so... And, and again, um, uh, having the right setup for uh, the, the session, for the, uh, the online meeting, the, the online uh, meeting part will actually help you to uh, make sure that students get the learning experience that uh, they uh, wanted and the learning experience that they, they deserve. So it, it's always based on how we design uh, the learning experience with uh, the, the students. Okay, so, so, so this was the, okay, so this is the, uh, the literature that I uh, referred to uh, for the, for the Belgium, um, uh, for the Belgian classroom, so uh, Race et al. 2020, which is a, a, a relatively new literature. Um, but remember, uh, if you uh, see the title of my uh, talk, uh, my webinar today, it's actually HyFlex, isn't it? The HyFlex model has been around since 2006. Uh, and they did the HyFlex model in the University of San Francisco. Um, and uh, that, I would say, that would be our starting point uh, when we wanted to design uh, the, the learning into our uh, hybrid classrooms. So we can start uh, from uh, uh, the HyFX model uh, of 2006. You can find the, the literature. And then you, so this, is, this would be the, one of the latest uh, references. This is uh, Race et al. 2020. Talks about um, how um, hybrid learning uh, have evolved and also how do we actually change in order for us to make full use of the uh, available new technology. So remember that in 2006, uh, hybrid learning is actually really, really hard to do because it's quite cutting edge and there is, no, there is no technology to support them as what we have now. The, the availability of like fast internet, the availability to sort of share screen and, and do things, things, like, things like what we can do today, isn't it? Which is uh, something that's uh, unthink of in 2006. But now we have this um, opportunity 
And what we need to do is we need to uh, make sure that we uh, update our uh, pedagogical methods uh, to accommodate not just the new technology, but to accommodate the uh, and to facilitate the learning in the hybrid uh, learning um, uh, classrooms. Uh, number two, um, when you do hybrid learning, it's actually uh, a little bit more coordination from us, the, the educators. That means we need to, uh, number one, be able to design a proper hybrid learning experience for our students, but we also need to get up to date a little bit more on the, um, uh, the technological requirement and also a bit more on the coordination because everything happens uh, in the um, in the real time. So, and we need to be able to coordinate between our online learners and also our um, uh, offline learners, I would say. And then um, uh, we need to be able to design and implement uh, that uh, give the students comparable learning experience whether they are online, whether they are face-to-face, -face, when they uh, learn, uh, when, when, they have, when they see the learning outcomes, when we design the learning outcomes, every, uh, everybody should uh, receive or get the same learning outcomes and also learning experience. Okay, and then, so this is one of the um, sort of um, uh, surveys that they run, and uh, it is... Uh, reported that the, the, the remote students say that it's difficult to get the, to get the attention of uh, the, the teachers. And that makes them frustrated and involved, uninvolved. So the way to uh, sort of avoid uh, having this is uh, number one comes with the technological support. The, the, the design of the classroom, the design of the technology to support our hybrid learning is actually uh, quite important. And then uh, number two is actually the uh, our own um, awareness of the, the the students who are online. We need to uh, always be clear that we have students who are teaching with us online. And in in UM, I think uh, one thing that we need to uh, we also need to uh, to to know is that um, uh, we have remote totally remote learning students. So that means students who register as remote learners and they will not have any classroom interaction uh, whatsoever. So they will need to be able to be included in the discussion, in the, the learning experience that we design and they will be one of the like more uh, critical users of hybrid learning because they will um, learn together with the students who are face-to-face. Uh, -face. Uh, so I think uh, that's um, all for uh, the, uh, I would say, the, uh, the, the discussion of the webinar for um, the hybrid learning. Um, so now uh, we go into the um, uh, question time. So if you have any questions, if you have any exp experience that you wanted to share, if you have any opinions that you wanted to uh, voice up, or you if you have any anything that anything else that you wanted to um, sort of point out uh, then it will uh, be uh, this will be the time uh, still you can um, i would say uh, you are you are still free to uh, go through the, the the powerpoint if you want to if you want to share your own experience if you want to share your your screen uh, you are also welcome to do so so um please so uh, I pass this over to you, yeah, our audience. Anyone? Oh, I have been talking too long. And people are already for policy. If you don't have any question, then I want to ask. Um, 
Sorry, there's actually a question uh, in the chat box. Oh, is it? Okay. Uh-uh. Okay, let me see. Okay. okay, what is your thought on using omnidirectional mic for hybrid learning? So, okay, um, Dr. Fong, can you, can you um, explain that a little bit more? Dr. Fong, are you here? I can see your name just now. Okay, so, um, ah, yes. Dr. Fong, you have a question on omnidirectional mic. Can, can you explain to me? Fong CS. Hello. Yeah. I can't hear you. Can you speak up, please? No. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes, uh, now I can hear you. Yes, uh, the, the omnidirectional mic. So you know that kind of might that where you can have uh they, they capture the sound from all direction from 360 mm -hmm. degree yeah mm -hmm. so what what is your take on that kind of mic in a hybrid setup okay so um actually uh, uh having an omnidirectional mic uh, like that uh would actually be uh really really useful uh in hybrid learning because uh, as i said before we need to not hear just the voice of the students, uh, sorry, of, of the lecturer, but we need to be also be able to hear uh, the voices of the people, especially in the in the face-to-face -face session. So then uh, the learners online will be able to uh, be engaged with not just the lecturer, but also their colleagues in the classroom. So yes, I, I'm, I'm fully agree. I, I fully agree that um, we should, have omnidirectional mics uh, for hybrid learning. So, and, and in the design for hybrid classrooms that we have for the university, we actually uh, we are actually going to hang the, the mic on the, the ceiling so that then everybody will be able to um, hear what's been going on in the classroom. Okay, so then question from um, so yeah, you had link. Okay, so this is on the on the oh, this is not a question. Do we have feedback from our students regarding the, the hybrid learning? Okay, um uh Dr. Normalina, um I can't say that I know of any so university wide uh, feedback uh, from that. Um uh, I haven't I haven't uh, looked in UM Confessions yet, so I don't know whether uh, we have feedbacks um, in UM Confessions. But I, I think um, one thing that we should uh, uh, think about uh, when we are teaching hybrid learning, uh, hybrid learning classrooms is we need to survey our students uh, in the class, in, in, the physical, in, the, in the actual classroom, isn't it? Uh, so if any of us, especially, uh, of course, me included, uh, we have students who are doing hybrid learning. We should get the students' feedback um, with regards to what's happening in the classroom. How how are they uh, sort of liking it or not liking it? Uh, what can we do to improve the experience of uh, the students? Uh, so that then we will have a complete picture uh, of um, our sort of uh, early deployment of uh, the hybrid learning. Um, okay, so what? Uh, so this is from um, you know, Dr. Slina. What is the appropriate rate if we have more than one students in the lecture? So if you have more than one students in the lecture, um, 
Is it in the lecture hall or in the um, uh, in the whole class we have hundred? Um, Dr. Sina, can you can you sort of exp explain it a bit? Lecture hall. Okay. So if you have one hundred more one more than one hundred students in the lecture hall, uh, of course, with the the, the recent uh, COVID as a OSOP, it has to be sort of um, cut in half. So half should be uh, online, half should be in the classroom uh, or in the, in the lecture hall. Um, and then, uh, so it, and also uh, it depends on the capacity, isn't it? So uh, what kind of capacity you have? So if you have 100 seating capacity, you have 100 students, then you need to cut, cut that in half. If you have a, a, a 200 capacity lecture hall, of course, then you can fit everybody in the, in the lecture hall, then you don't have to have a hybrid. But maybe you need to think about hybrid if, for example, there are there are people who uh, register for remote learning or there are people who are unable to uh, sort of come to the, to the campus for some reason. And then um, the arrangement for, so the arrangement for hybrid learning in the classroom, uh, I would suggest that um, you look at the example um, that we have uh, in the, in this one, isn't it? So, so that would be, um, the, the arrangement that we need to think about uh, for a lecture hall, especially the, the, the existing lecture hall that we have. So instead of uh, putting the camera at the back of the, the room, which normally lecture halls are really, really big, isn't it? And if you put the camera, the PTC camera at the back, then of course, the, the students who are online will not be able to see much. So uh, design uh, a solution where you put the uh, online students in front, so maybe you need to sort of um, uh, uh, close off the, the first one or two rows so that then you can place the, uh, the, the monitors and also you can place the, uh, the camera that faces the, the lecturer uh, at least. So that would be the, the, the minimum. And uh, the, the point or the, the purpose of having um, the monitor put in front is that um, we have the awareness that the students who that the students online who who are actually learning online is in front of us, and of course we have the uh, other fifty students in the in the hundred student lecture uh, which are uh, in uh, in the, the other the other rows of, of of the seats. I think that would uh, be uh, sort of useful in our situation with our existing uh, lecture. So if you can. Uh, can sort of point out where you are uh, teaching uh, the Tasina, uh, then we might be able to sort of uh, go there and look at uh, the setup that you have and then uh, suggest uh, improvements uh, if uh, I think you, you think that that would be useful uh, in your uh, lecture, lecture, uh, lecture halls. Okay, so hopefully that answers your question. Um, yeah, um, I think there is no more questions on, uh, in the chat. Okay, there's no more questions in the chat. So anyone um, want to say anything? Uh, uh, Dr. Um, yes. Uh, dear Doctor, I, I, I have a, you know, a question, it's not to say question, it's just a uh, wild thought. Um, for the time being, is there any like, particular body overseeing the setup of hybrid uh, classes in UM? Can, can you repeat the question? Um, is there anyone that is actually particularly looking into the hybrid setup within the classes within UM? Because like me, myself, I'm actually from Institute for Advanced Studies and we recently have a setup here Mm -hmm. But I don't, I mean, I mean, like, like what you say, we don't have the best uh, facilities, but it's enough. But I'm pretty sure that it's quite different from the setup you have in your faculty. So, you know, is there a, somebody to actually like decide or see like what is the best configuration? Okay, for, uh, okay yeah. actually, uh, we, we were working on a centrally sort of uh, a central design for the the 
the hybrid classes, uh, the hybrid classes uh, for the university, and this was uh, done last year. So the first batch uh, consists of, um, I think, um, almost all of the faculties, and then, uh, and then there are people from JPPHB, uh, myself, and the people from the TSC office who are looking at the. The, the right setup for the, the classroom, but uh, we so we we don't uh, we don't tell people how to do it. Uh, we allow the, the the technicians from each of the uh, PTJ. So uh, maybe your your PTJ uh, also uh, uh, to come to us, show the layout that you suggest, and then we will actually give feedback. Uh, in what you should have or what, what you should uh, think about uh, when you are designing uh, the places. And of course, uh, uh, if you want to uh, run through your, your, your design with us, um, uh, you are welcome to do so. So just, just email me with, with, the, with your ideas and with the layout that you have, and then I can give you the, the feedback uh, that you have and that uh, so hopefully can improve uh, your hybrid learning classes. Um, for now, um, uh, of course, people with um, are doing like, like the, the bare minimum. So I'm, I've been to a few places. Uh, so I've seen a few sort of basic setup uh, of uh, hybrid learning. Uh, I went to education. So they set up their camera on either on tables or on tripods. Uh, and they, they have to rely on microphones. Uh, although it's not ideal, but uh, uh, it has to be... Um, Sort of, it has to be done uh, for like the really, really the rapid deployment. Um, we also have uh, examples. Um, I've, I've, I've seen to so I've seen faculty of science. I've seen faculty of education. I've seen faculty of languages as well. So one of their uh, yeah one of their classrooms. So uh, and and I think um, we can still improve uh, from that. And the central contract is coming. Is coming in hopefully um, as soon as possible, and then that is just the phase, the, the first phase of the central contract. So, what we want, what we design the process to be is, we will install everything for the first um, round of central contract for uh, hybrid learning, and then we will actually gather feedback. We, we will get the data from uh, the deploy, the first deployment, and for the second round. Uh, of deployment, we'll, we will use the data, the learning that we get from the first deployment to actually inform us on, on a better or on a, on a more appropriate setup uh, for uh, the, the second round. So, so we, we are actually working uh, at the central level to uh, help equip all uh, classes, um, not all classes, uh, the, the selected classes in the in the hybrid learning uh, for all PTG. So I mean, um, eventually, all PTG will have their own uh, sort of uh, hybrid learning uh, set up, a proper one where uh, the students just come in, uh, sorry, the, the lecturers will be able to just come in, press one or two buttons and then get going. So um, when, when, when designing a hybrid learning uh, set up for the university, uh, I always stop, I, I, I always tell the, um, uh, the, the, the technical people uh, in JPPHB is that um, so and this is something that's really, really true uh, when I when I find, uh, when I sort of um, uh, try to sort of uh, design this, uh, this solution for us is that uh, in, 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 in computer softwares you have user friendly isn't it so user friendly software is easy to use but in uh, learning uh, we don't. Uh, we as lecturers, we don't want to be. Um, we we don't want to be bothered with the, the the technology part so much. We need to be able to do what we do most, which is go into the classroom and teach, design the, the learning for the students, not the technology. So uh, user 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 friendly is one level, and then professor friendly should be a level be, below user friendly. So that means we don't have to think about the technology. The technology should just work for us. And that is the, the kind of, the sort of thinking that I'm trying to uh, um, design or 
that is the kind of the, the mentality that I wanted to design uh, uh, for the, the hybrid learning uh, setup in the university. We just go in and we just do our thing. So we don't really have to worry about um, the, the, the technology part. So maybe there will be uh, one or two buttons that we need to push, but that's it. So hopefully that will come into um, fruition, um, um, especially when uh, we have um, like remote learning uh, running in full in uh, sorry, one, one or two years time. Uh, not really. So uh, perhaps we need to learn the skill of teaching focus by devising our focus to physical online student. Uh, yes, of course. So when, when you are designing um, uh, designing classes, uh, online classes, especially uh, uh, the hybrid classes, then uh, you need to think about the uh, the uh, the engagement uh, of the, the students. We need to get attention to both. We need to give attention uh, uh, to both um, moods of students. And um, that, I think, uh, requires um, uh, learning on our part. So we still need to learn to do this, isn't it? Because it's actually something that's uh, different. Um, and we need to actually shift uh, and adopt our pedagogical methods, our learning, our teaching approach to actually be able to um, uh, address uh, both uh, modes uh, together. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, uh, can edit conduct? Of course, um, yes, we need to, uh, of, of course, design. Uh, we need to also experience it ourselves. And, uh, and then um, when we have more people who are doing um, uh, online learning and hybrid learning, uh, we will have uh, experiences that we, we, all of us can share. So um, we will also be guided with um, your experience and how we can um, move forward with this. Of course, we will uh, be able to so, uh, design a course or uh, uh, training or workshop uh, around this. There are a few workshops that we are uh, working on already for, for the year, but yeah, we can start this in. Okay, thank you, uh, Dr. Noam Malina. Um, yes, I think, um, any more questions or any more, any, anyone who wants to uh, say anything before we end? So, um, uh, Umu, do you want to take pictures? Um, yes. Um, uh, just okay. Um, can we have everyone uh, turn on their video so we can take pictures for this webinar? Um, also, our staff have um posted two links, uh, to attendance form and feedback form. Make sure you fill up that too. So, maybe we can have everyone turn on their video. Ida, anytime you're ready. Okay, ready everyone. Hmm. Ada lagi ke yang nak buka video? Ada semua. Uh, Proyek Muna tak buka lagi. Dr. Fazawal belum, Dr. Yap belum, Dr. Masyur. Ustaz Ahmad belum. Alright, uh, there's two page so Dr. keep Fazal smiling ini. for five minutes until our staff <laughs> Finish taking the picture. All right. Okay, one, two, three, smile. And add one, two, three, smile. Okay. Smile. All right. Thank you. Okay, yeah, thank you. All right. Um. Actually, we plan this training to be until one, but since it's already finished early, uh, while you fill up the feedback form later, uh, we appreciate your feedback for future training. Maybe you can suggest a few that we can do on hybrid learning. Um. So until then, I guess uh we can say bye now, Dr. Zahi. Any last words? Well, nothing from me. I'm. I'm probably uh, just um, uh, make sure that you um, uh, 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 use this experience from the webinar to design uh, learning, better learning experience for the hybrid classrooms. That's all.
All right. Thank you, Dr. Zahir. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much, Dr. Zahir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zahir. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Zahir.